This is Pastor Steve from St. Mark United Methodist Church with a word of encouragement for you today. Have you ever heard of Jim Stockdale? I guess that unless you're of a certain age, you probably haven't, but he was a Navy pilot during the Vietnam War. In fact, he got shot down while on a mission in 1965, was beaten and thrown to prison, the infamous Hanoi Hilton. There he'd spend the next eight years of his life being regularly beaten, confined to a three by nine foot cell with a light bulb that dangled over his head and was never turned off. Poor food, no medical care. He lived out over 3,000 days in that situation. But you know, when he emerged in 1973, he was not a broken man. Sure, his bones and his body had to heal, but his mind was sharp and his spirit's good. He'd go on to serve as president of the War College, go on to be successful in business, he even became the running mate of Ross Perot in the 1992 presidential election. He lived a full good life after eight years of torture and imprisonment. When asked how he was able to do this, he replied with what's now known as the Stockdale Paradox. He said, you have to hold two things in tension. One is the fact you have to face honestly the brutal situation, the reality you live in. That meant realizing every day he was indeed in prison feel the aches and pains of the beatings and the confinement of the clamps were put on his legs every night in case he decided to escape. But the other side of the paradox is the fact that you never lose faith that you will overcome. You never lose sight of the fact that this is not the end of your story. You will get out of this. A faith in the future. Confront the brutal reality. Never lose faith in the future. That was how he got through. Now people asked him, well, who had the most trouble in the prison? He said, really, it was the, the optimists, those who had a Pollyanna view of things, who kept saying, by Christmas we'll get out, by, by Easter, New Year's, I know New Year's, we'll be, we'll be getting out of here. Each time they set a, a marker, set a date, an expectation, they were disappointed. Each time they were disappointed, they became a little more broken inside. Now, the good news for us as followers of Jesus Christ is we have a hope that we can never lose. We have a hope that will get us through any circumstance. But again, those who live most faithfully are those who also realize the, again, the brutal reality of the situation. The coronavirus is real. We're living in a very limited situations, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of loneliness for some. That's a, a real reality. But laying right beside that, hopefully maybe on top of that, is a faith in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who said that in the world you're going to have trouble. You're going to have persecution or tribulation. Hey, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. It's a paradox, yes, to say things are tough, but our faith says things will turn out okay. That is how we live as followers of Jesus. Let me share with you one verse that's meant a lot to me over these last few days from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 9. It says, it's a prayer of Jehoshaphat. Let me put it back in context. Joseph was praying a prayer when they were surrounded by the enemy. Judah was in dire straits. And his prayer went like this, O Lord, we are powerless against the great multitude that is coming against us. We don't know what to do but our eyes are on you. That's the key. Again, the reality is bad. We're powerless. We don't know what to do. But the faith that overcomes says, but our eyes are on you. Let me close with a prayer that may be very familiar to you in some ways, but I don't think we've ever heard the full prayer, at least many of us. It's a prayer by Reinhold Niebuhr, an American theologian, 20th century. His words, the first part of the prayer, are very familiar. God, give us the grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed, courage to change the things that which should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. That's a serenity prayer. We're, we're very familiar with that, especially if you're NA or AA type of person. But have you ever heard the rest of the prayer? Let me continue. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, 
this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. That's a pretty good prayer for times like this. Knowing times are tough, but knowing our God is greater. And that's the faith that will get us through. Amen.